Ra cái cái nào mới đi, nào đi nào gặp, kia nhà nhà đi cái này kì, nhà la pa lo la pa lo, cái lồng hồn, ở đó là nhà anh kia ruộng nhà rồi, nhà kia thì vậy, buôn tự nhiên nhà anh kia ra ở đó, anh kia ở đó, nhà ít, buôn buôn anh luôn anh luôn buôn nhiều cái này kì, anh kia ở chợ ở đó, nhiều chợ nhiều cái tiếng anh kia to anh kia ở đó. Amodoy is only one of hundreds of children and young adults driven to backbreaking work as a means of survival. Scenes such as this one and stories similar to Amodoy's were a dime a dozen for staff of Resource Rights Africa over a three-year period as they implemented the community action to promote transparency and accountability of natural resources in Karamoja project. Resource Rights Africa is a research and development organization that advocates for the promotion and protection of people's rights in Uganda. As an organization, we started in 2016 and we've been working towards uh, uh, creating awareness uh, in rural communities for people to, to defend for their rights. Because of the unique nature of this sub-region, Karamoja, uh, with low educational levels, with low um, uh, levels of involvement, and of course also with the impact of COVID-19, we have seen that most, most children have left school and now they are holed up in the mines. According to the Uganda Bureau of Statistics, UBOS, 51% of children from households living below the poverty line are forced out of school to work as a means of supplementing their parents' incomes. 23% of these children working in Uganda are in the Karamoja sub-region. Like Amodoy, children between the ages of 5 and 17 years remain the most at risk. In the northeastern region of Karamoja specifically, literacy rates remain some of the lowest in the country. It's one of our core values that we should not accept child labor within the district. It's one of the principles that we want to continue talking to our communities. However, we cannot avoid the vice given the current or the prevailing situations within the district. Kotido district is one of the districts that is, has a low literacy rate and it's inevitable that children could be sent out for, to seek for labor for survival. Especially this year, aware that the anger situation was a bit high, most of the children were sent out to seek for casual labor to support the households. Although child labor presents a little different in Kotido than in Moroto, for instance, the vice presents huge challenges nonetheless. Because it presents life-threatening working conditions that are ultimately detrimental to the well-being of children, mining, an activity engaged in in Karamoja remains one of the worst forms of child labor. Moroto has a lot of mining areas. We are blessed with minerals in about three or four sub-counties. And uh, this has attracted a number of uh, private sector actors, investors, and uh, local artisanal miners. Now the challenge here is about 80% of households around those mineral rich uh, areas in the district are supported by children. Uh, we are having uh, children in mines using rudimental methods and also being exposed to dangerous substances like mercury. And they are handling it without any protective gears. They don't have gloves. The aspect of uh, child labor is driven by lack of better working conditions even for the adult miners because if adult miners are well paid and resourced then you will not see child labor in the mines because the parents will be having enough resources to push their children back to school. My name is Omuge Moses. I'm 16 years old. I'm here breaking stones. I came here in 2012. I was born in Morto district. When his parents separated, Moses was taken by his father to Kosiroi to live with his grandmother. 
Five years later, his grandmother sent him to work in the quarry so he could support the family. She told me to go and break stones to get money for school, school fees. And I left school in 2017 when I'm just still breaking stones from this place. And the challenges is that if you, even you come here, the money, they are not enough. And even the grandma needs some money for, for his food. And for also people who work, so my brothers, little ones who work there, looking for animals. I just break for two weeks, I get 240,000. I have uh, like four brothers and six sisters. I could just want to, all my brothers and sisters to be educated. Clearly, the mining areas remain a hotspot for activities of child labor. If we find a hotspot like the mining place, there are more children there that are doing work. We hold dialogues with the children. We encourage them to go back to school and we have created motivational centers. For now, we have mobilized Nanyedik along Nakiloro Road. We have two motivational centers and the turn up of the children, the enrollment is very high. Uh, last quarter, we enrolled about 100 children, but of course, the enrollment keeps dropping. Our communities take children as bread earners in their family. So children are exposed to all forms of child labor, including selling alcohol, local brew, and so on, carrying charcoal, carrying firewood. So you find that the young children who are supposed to be in school are the ones who are really involved in this matter. Not all the people in the community have embraced the issue of education. So we still have a good number of children outside the school. We have just attracted maybe a quarter only. But three quarters of these children are still outside the school. In a region where a low value is attached to education generally, there is need to come up with innovative ways to encourage enrollment and access. We as uh, Resource Right Africa are trying to understand how we can incorporate uh, the aspect of helping these children uh, maybe to access a school uh, through this project. We are actually uh, conducting a research to ensure that we get an understanding where these children are there and which solutions should we put across so that these children can be supported. Right now we are in Tapach sub-county. This is Tapach Parish. Yes, but specifically this is the Tapach Trading Centre. Today, the message we are relaying to the community is majorly to do with the, the child, child labor and possibly how their communities can come out of promoting child labor, domestic violence, child violence, and um, they could think of better ways of protecting the, ch the children and sending the children back to school because there's actually free education. And the children can get the basic education required for them to, 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 to earn a livelihood. You know, put, putting aside the dangers in the mining areas in, in, in Kosroi, you know, the kids are being wounded. I mean, there's no profit, pro protective gear. And even the money they receive is not enough, really, to take them to school as, as, as they claim they are working for school fees. Yet, in actual sense, there are very many CD, there are very many used schools around. Primary schools, most of the children in the mines are, are primary school going age. So we are advocating for the parents, the community, the people that, that hold the power, the power be, you know, get to know that the children should really be taken back to school, should come out of the child labor aspect, should come out of the violences that are taking place in the mines, and, and possibly a better community would be, would be promoted within the community of Tapach. Puppet theater, an approach adopted and used by Resource Rights Africa, is an innovative but fun way to communicate fundamental issues to the community, young and old alike. Akech Maureen, a pupil at Child Jesus Primary School in Moroto Town, was in the audience and had this to say after the show when asked why it is important for children to go to school. Some parents, they don't take kids to school, they just want cows. But also as we are studying from this place here, to get a better future. Our task is 
to synthesize the community's issues of the children. Take back children to school, not on the querying side. Let us take our, our children to, uh, to school. Families whom they have educated their children, they are more powerful than for us people who, who are having animals, cows, any time will be removed by what? By the enemies. And then you remain poor, and yet you have been having about 100 cows yesterday, but today you are just poor. Even with a robust legal and policy framework against child exploitation, the issue of child labor continues to worsen. In 2016, the Children Amendment Act was approved. However, despite the approval of the act which criminalizes child labor, follow-up still remains a big challenge. We have very many good laws on children, but the implementation, I think we're just shelving them. Let's share. Those who have failed to reform and take children to school must be punished. And I think some programs at community level should be tagged that if you don't take your child to school, no benefiting from this program. If you don't take your child for immunization, no benefiting. I think we should set standards for certain programs. I think people will learn. Last year's council, the 10th council, were to engage the council to come out with what the education ordinance. That will give some, some directives, some punishments or penalties for those parents who have not gone to, who have not taken children to school. The, uh, the ordinance were produced, we were popularized them, but what is left now is enforcement. The enforcement is still very low. To have impactful change, what needs to be done? I would re really recommend to government, to partners, that if we could put it a policy for our schools here to be boarding. Because in the boarding sections, we can retain this student for the, the whole academic year. Because now, the most affected children are those ones who are operating from home, the day scholars. They, they, at the school, they have a meal, at least a midday meal, but when they go home, there's nothing in the evening. We are looking at a model like the one we had before of ABEC, Alternative Basic Education for Karamoja. Uh, in this, we want to take school nearer uh, to the mining places because we, have had new, we are having new settlements now. Uh, people are leaving their original villages and settlements. They are shifting to stay permanently in those mining areas where there are no social services. If there was a way of uh, scholarships to these children, these people who are in school, at least those ones who do very well in P7 would continue. The second that would have been a good help. Issues related to children should also not be left in the hands of teachers only. I think we need the elders because in this place, the elders are more influential. When they say no to education, and that is it. So we need to involve them in the Go Back to School campaign. We target specifically the elders of Karamoja on the issues of Go Back to School. As government now, and as Karamoja, we are suggesting that there should be compulsory primary education for our children in Karamoja. This will not only address the child labor issue, but also recruitment into warrior wood for the boy child. Perhaps with these recommendations successfully implemented, the children of Karamoja will little by little be given the opportunity to be just that. Children. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.